Hi Ram, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Prashant. I'm doing good today. I hope you are as well. Yes, and uh, congratulations for uh, for that. Met. Uh, I'm sure you worked hard for that. For that, and uh, good time to go to a business school. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, which campus are you joining? Uh, I'll be joining the Hyderabad campus. Okay, super exciting. And, and I see that uh, your profile has been uh, equally exciting. I mean, even after graduating from one of the top engineering colleges, securing a nine point GPA, you have had one of the most unique profiles on it, get it ISP. So why don't you begin by explaining what you've been doing and how you got into it? So I studied in uh, RV College of Engineering. It's uh, one of the one of the better colleges here in Bangalore and uh, and after that, I worked in Siemens, Siemens Healthcare Private Limited. But along the side, I was always into the outdoors, uh, hiking, rock climbing, all of these things. And as I kept investing more of my time and energy and focus into the outdoors as a hobby, I saw that I was able to perform really well in the outdoors when it comes to just your physical performance and also your emotional energy, right? You want to be present in the moment and be able to handle things that happened there and uh, slowly I thought okay why not uh, look into this more than just a hobby so I went about doing my certifications getting more experience outdoors and eventually I switched to a company called India Hikes which is also Bangalore based but uh, they operate in the Himalayas so okay my role was as a, a outdoor trip leader there in India Hikes that's where I've been for the last one and a half years, almost more than one and a half years. Interesting. So, so when you say uh, outdoor trip leader, if you could mm -hmm. uh, elaborate a bit more, uh, what kind of uh, teams were you working with? What kind of uh, uh, activities you were leading? Mm -hmm. Were uh, there any budgets involved? Uh, so, what were you doing exactly? Mm -hmm. So, if you see in our country now. Uh, adventure sports has become uh, more prominent than it was before. Ten years back, not many folks would think about going to the Himalayas for a vacation. But now a lot more people come to do trekking and other adventure activities. So last year, almost 20,000 uh, people trekked with just us in India hikes. And there are okay. so many other as well. So uh, there is a need for people who are well versed in the outdoors. and. Uh, the folks who can manage the your client's trip basically so when it comes to what, uh, leading a trip you have to know all about the terrain that you're going to uh be ready to deal with any weather conditions or uh, any w natural causes right you never know what nature will throw at you right. and also you have to deal with uh, medical issues because as far as everyone else is concerned you are the uh, responsible wilderness uh, medicine guy on the trip. So I mean, everybody who works in the outdoors needs to do a medical certification. So as far as medicine is concerned, I was like the doctor on the trip as well. And also I had to manage my own team, which uh, consists of folks from the village villages in the Himalayas, some people from Bangalore here who take care of uh, logistics and getting the, getting our customers to uh, the point where we take over. So my job had to be uh, leading the clients, but also a large chunk of it happened even before they got here. So you had to plan what you would be taking in terms of food for the next one week or 10 days or 20, 25 days, how, how much of a long the trip is going to be. And how are you going to take in the food? In some places you can take mules, in some places you have to take yaks, in some places you have to take human porters. So. Right. Uh, Dealing with all of these logistics, the quantities of food, how to supply them, how to procure them, and also the staff. How many staff do you want with you? Do you want one cook, two guides, and five other assistants? Or what, what's the number you want? Uh, all of that would be decisions that we have to take based on the list of customers that we got for that trip. So right. all of this was- it not being a uh, uh, in office job, I see good elements of strategy, leadership, as well as people skills coming in. Right, right. Awesome. Yeah, and and really appreciate uh, how you know because trekking and hiking uh, are things that 
a lot of people are passionate about but really appreciate how you had the courage to pursue it full time and uh, of course this is very different profile and uh, you know the uh, so while it makes you stand out it also comes mm -hmm. with the challenge of being uh, able to convince the business school that you really can add value to the class because you don't have a typical corporate profile so right. so what was your primary strategy while developing your application mm -hmm. so if you look at where i was operating right the outdoors uh, you pretty much are exposed to most of the problems that uh, people in other streams what we call conventional stream face as well so but it would just be in a different the constraints are different and the parameters are different but uh, if you see we had to deal with supply we had to deal with hu uh, human resource customer satisfaction these are all the terms that you would see be seen thrown around in what we call our conventional streams as well right but it would just it, it was phrased in a different way so uh, in this job, what I got an exposure to was being the the main point, as in the main point of contact uh, for an extended amount of time, being the leader. So because as long as we were out in the wilderness, I was supposed to be the person taking all the shots, calling all the okay. shots. When it comes to your customers, your staff, your team, uh, all the final decisions would be taken by me. Of course, we talk about it and discuss it with our team, but then I had to give the final uh, decision. So all of this gave me a really good exposure to leadership and managing uh, different kinds of people, whether it be uh, folks from the villages in the Himalayas or customers from all over the world. So I had to learn how to communicate with different kinds of people to get what I needed to get done. And I believe that this was this leadership skill was something that could be easily transitioned into uh, what a business school is looking for. And that was my primary strategy coming into applying for ISP was to really showcase the leadership that I was doing in the outdoors and sort of tie it in into how it is not really that different from uh, what many other folks do back in the city. Hello. Yeah. Hi, I'm sorry. Uh, Bangalore doesn't have a lot of power cuts, but it had to be now. So, oh, unfortunate. OK, uh, so I think we are back. And and uh, so what I heard last was uh, that the focus was uh, on leadership. So that was your primary strategy. Right. Yeah. So uh, as I just said, my focus was on le leadership that I had been doing into the outdoors. And I wanted to show that it's not very different from what uh, most conventional people in these streams do back here in the front country. So just the environment is different, but the role was more or less the same. Right. Makes a lot of sense. And uh, of course, this should, uh, this should motivate and uh, give some uh, direction to a lot of people who do not follow the conventional path. Now, I also see that you had a good range of extracurriculars that were well aligned with your career plans. So mm -hmm. how much strength uh, do you think these extracurriculars added to your application? Uh, it, it definitely added a lot of strength because in my situation, what happened was these things were extracurriculars initially, and then it became my uh, professional development, if you call it. So courses that I do or skills that I acquire as a hobby three, four years back was now a necessity for my job. And that's why, uh, be it climbing or uh, when it comes to map navigation or also in rock climbing instruction, these were things I did as a hobby back then and which really helped me in my job as well. And uh, I guess this is why I, also I came from a lot of sports, back, conventional sports background, be it your football and basketballs. I was a part of my uh, school and college teams. So that also helped and helped me instill in myself this leadership, sense of teamwork, uh, all of these skills. So I believe that's how it tied into my uh, core skills as well. Right. So. So the major learning I think uh, applicants can draw from this is, uh, you know, when they talk about or look for what more one should do to build their profile, it is just following your passion and being genuine about what you want instead of doing random things. 
yeah for sure right i guess yeah the, i was very lucky in the fact that i found out what my passion was very quickly <laughs> uh, that is a hard thing to find out i i think so completely agree yeah. <laughs> great and uh, and of course uh, candidates also remain super concerned about not making it to their dream school just based on the gmat sometimes it's low sometimes uh, it's not high enough uh, or competitive enough uh, you had a gmat score that was lower than the class average uh, at isb so how did you overcome that and what was your thought process behind uh, going ahead with the application even with a uh, not so high gmat uh, in the month in the one month leading to gmat when i was preparing right i was speaking to a lot of uh, people who are right now in isb and some of my friends who are alumni uh they looked at my profile and they said hey if for you even if you don't you know get a really really high score in the gmat uh your essays can get you over the top uh so that that was the consensus advice i got from talking to a lot of people in this field be it uh, isb alumni uh, folks who do consulting for management schools who had met on trex uh they told me focus on your essays and focus on making your profile on really getting that message you want to get out there also study in the gmat and do your best and then hope hope that that score really uh doesn't stand out but doesn't stand out in a bad way so just let it be quite good above 700 is what i was aiming for and uh, in the weeks leading up in my mocks i definitely was scoring a little higher than the final test but it's it's all right i mean when i got my score i was fairly confident that hey with my profile and uh, if i work on my essays really well i stand a good shot at uh, getting the interview call right and and your essays did come out really well and i think what what you are trying to say is uh, the right amount of research connecting with the uh, connecting with alumni connecting with experts and understanding where you stand can give you uh, some advantage in terms of not worrying too much about your gmat and focusing on the right thing which is uh, often your application because there is only so much you can do on the gmat yeah prashant you said it perfectly great and uh, uh, and and uh, when i when i look at your essays of course uh, you know whether said presented really well some very concrete career plans in your essays for the next 5 years and 10 years because that focus has been there uh, even before you applied for the mba so that kind mm -hmm. of uh, percolates uh, down to your application and essays as well so uh, so tell me more about your interview experience uh, how what was the conversation all around and how what do you think the interviewers focused on so the interviewers were pretty surprised at my profile as well uh when i went when i went to the interview they wanted to know what i do in my day to day job as in what's a day in my life like when i'm working uh so they were very interested in that they were interested in my decision making style they asked me how i took decisions regarding clients or my own team and how i changed my voice accordingly when it came to different people and they were also interested in challenges that i faced in the outdoors uh because i guess the when it comes to out outdoors a uh, lot of us could can think get an idea of what's happening but to really relate to it you need to be out there you need to have done that uh to really really empathize i believe probably uh, the more ex the better folks can already em empathize i'm i'm sure many of them can but then uh so luckily they had also been on such treks the the people who were interviewing me so they okay. could really empathize with what i uh, told about outdoor leadership and how it really tied into this to my skills uh, in why i would provide value to isb moreover they were interested in uh, what i did in siemens and why i switched over to something like this because it looked like a very uh, what it's sort of you know it strikes you right it's not pretty unconventional yes kind of, uh, yeah, someone's making this sort of a switch so they were interested to get the reasons as to why i did that and also they just like you asked me they focus on my extracurriculars they asked me how uh, doing a wilderness medicine course 
and doing a trip leader course, how these help me uh, achieve skills and how it helped me change my personality. And also they wanted to know, hey, you are an outdoors guy. Uh, will you be able to sit tight in a business school for one year? <laughs> yeah. So tell them that, you know, hey, uh, in the end, it's all going to tie back into the outdoors. So all of this is towards that uh, destination. And I, get, I believe that's what convinced them. Right. And candidates often think that the interviewers uh, try to stress them, they grill them, and they are out there to uh, probably make them nervous. But uh, your interview seems to have gone uh, fairly like a conversation. So, so do you think, uh, was there any attempt to grill you or uh, stress you, or was it uh, more around understanding you well? Uh, in fact, I had read every debrief that uh, was there on ISB Mantra. So I was really okay. ready for a, for a grilling stress interview. Uh, I, I was ready for the gamut, basically. Hey, if you're going to give that sort of an interview, I'm, I'm ready to face that. But if you want to have a more co casual conversation, and I was ready for that as well. So, uh, but then when I went in, the interviewers were very, very understanding. Uh, they, it was having a very pleasant conversation. And I didn't feel that they were trying to rile up my emotions or get me in a stressful place. Right. Of course. And uh, so what I always tell candidates is uh, that if you don't know the answers or if you're not prepared well, you think you're being grilled. But the interviewers always want to understand you and your profile and want to have a good 30 minute conversation. Yeah. And I believe because I was this whole thing is something I'm really passionate about that passion sort of shown through in my answers and they were able to see it as well. Right. Of course, I mean, that's the key because uh, you may be doing something uh, which is mundane, but when the passion comes across, uh, it kind of tells them that you will remain equally passionate even after you MBA in whatever you do. So true, Prashant. Right. And uh, now that you have that met, uh, of course, a lot of parties, uh, obviously, but how else are you spending your time uh, between the admit decision and uh, before you join the program in the second week of April, I believe? Yeah, the second week of April. So uh, are there any uh, pre-courses you've done? Are there is there any preparation you're doing and what kind of engagement uh, you're having with other admits and with ISB, uh, you know, whatever platforms uh, may be available? Mm -hmm. Uh, I applied in round one. So my admission came in some, sometime in the second week of November. Right. And uh, in, when the admission came in, I was on a trip in the Himalayas and I found out some days later. Yeah. So <laughs> okay. I, I took a month off in uh, a couple of months off to prepare for my GMAT and submit my application. But once the application was submitted, I was back in the mountains. Uh, when I got my interview call as well, I was in Nepal and we had to sort of reschedule the interview and ISB were very uh, understanding and rescheduling my interview date as well. Uh, so once my admission decision came, nothing really changed for me in the big picture because I was still guiding uh, trips in the outdoors. But then once the winter really set in in the mountains, I came back to Bangalore uh, to to get done with the paperwork and the bank loan and all these other nitty gritties that need to be done. Uh, again, so February and March, I was supposed to go back, but then uh, that's another whole story altogether. And right now I'm just in Bangalore. I'm focusing on building healthy habits that will help me in my uh, time at ISB. Uh, when it comes to pre-courses, I haven't really uh, studied much per se. I, I believe ISB has uh, two courses that they give you uh, access to before the college starts. So I'm looking forward to that. What I've done is I've spoken to a lot of alumni and my friends to get an understanding of, hey, how can I be best prepared mentally uh, to handle whatever happens in ISB? Right. And a lot of uh, interaction on the WhatsApp groups and other platforms, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I recently joined a WhatsApp group and so the conversation is just going on and on and on there. And it's good to see uh, other folks because for the longest time, I never met anyone else who was also an admit. Uh, I recently got in and it's 
finally, it's like, hey, there are so many other people who are facing the same dilemmas and thinking about the same things that I'm thinking as well. And that's very reassuring in a way. Right. And and the entire anticipation of what will happen, how difficult it will be, how easy it will be, is yeah. the, the one year GRS program. So that has its own excitement. Yeah, it's super exciting. Awesome. Great. And uh, so th that, I think, uh, gives a lot of insights about how one can position their profile, how one can uh, focus on the right areas instead of being distracted by the abundance of information online. And uh, hopefully also motivate people who uh, who don't have a conventional profile. Yeah. Now, uh, I that, uh, yes. Hope not more people get out into doing things that we term as unconventional. Yeah. So uh, I right. think this there is a lot more opportunity, I feel. And also it's to do with circumstances. For me, the circumstances lined up really well and I could take this decision and go, go forth in this career. So in that way, I hope I'm able to inspire uh, others as well to do things like yes. outdoors, uh, art, okay. creative uh, ventures and all these things, yeah. And fortune favors the brave, as they say. So <laughs> why not? But uh, but before we wrap up, uh, we'll be glad to hear from you on how associating with ISB Mantra helped you streamline your thoughts or refine your answers, uh, the kind of uh, people you interacted with, etc. Mm -hmm. uh, I initially heard about ISB Mantra from a friend of mine who is now an uh, alumnus of ISB, and he okay. also had with you uh, to build his interview skills and uh, his. He, he, the fact that he vouched for ISB Mantra was a really uh, big deal for me in convincing me as well. But so then I went through the website and I read all that you had uh, put out there. And it's really comprehensive when it comes to uh, all the information about ISB, the different terms, uh, and of course, the interview debriefs. So the what I really liked about the interview debrief was how it was categorized in uh, different you know, hey, a manufacturing guy would, there are manufacturing interviews. And right. when it comes to technology and diversity, uh, I really wanted to get an experience about how someone who's backing on the whole diversity card had an interview. And I saw a lot of those debriefs as well on uh, the website. And that was really helpful in getting an idea of what uh, the interviewers would really look for, look for. So once I read up about all the debriefs, I was convinced that, hey, I need to get uh, uh, I need to your help to make my interview a big success. And I spoke with uh, one Mr. Vikram. Right. And this, so we had a conversation. It was not very long. I'd say 45 minutes probably. But then it was not about the duration. The quality was really, really good. I mean, the way I was answering questions in my head, you know, preparing for the interview was a lot more English, I'd say. And he <laughs> put put in more numbers, more statistics, and a different way of presenting my opinions. If I say, hey, this thing is good, this industry is developing, uh, it's it's a very it's ambiguous answer, right? But if you say, hey, this much is how the industry developed this year by this many people came in, and this is the kind of growth that we uh, got in our company and in our industry. So that gives a much more well-informed and well-thought-out and researched answer uh, to the people asking the question. And that's what the expect right so you need to be really well informed and in that way uh, mr vikram helped me get a really really nice uh, idea of how to phrase my answers and of course he has the he's been there done that kind of guy so uh, his questions were very straightforward to the point and uh, i i really liked it from right from the get-go uh, he also told me hey these are your strengths these are good let them be uh, these are areas where you can improve you know look at uh, it's sort of polishing your answers in these and polishing your profile in these so and so ways, and that will really put you in a good position. Uh, that was very very helpful as well. Great, of course, yeah, Vikram. Uh, so Vikram is someone who has worked with the admissions team before, and uh, he has mentored uh, not less than five hundred people. <laughs> So uh, great, great that uh, you uh, you benefited from the conversation and the preparation that you uh, that you came uh, came up for, uh, and I'm sure uh, this conversation and all the insights that you provided uh, comes with 
a lot of first-hand experience, a lot of uh, research, and uh, you know goes on to motivate several people who are looking to apply to ISB, or I'm sure this applies to any business school that they would be looking to apply to. So yeah. thank you so much, Ram, for taking out time, for being so candid about uh, how you approach the entire process and uh, really uh, you know, uh, best wishes for the great time that you're going to have at ISB and your career beyond that. Thank you, Prashant. Thank you so much for having me and for all the help. My pleasure. See you soon then. Bye. Yeah, bye.